So, I am so excited to be with you. I want to start with this slide. Could neuroimaging have prevented this tragedy and others like it? It just doesn't go away when you see what is happening in the NFL. It was just last week in Dallas, the week before in Kansas City, the tragedies keep happening. 1994, the NFL formed its concussion committee. But in 18 years, it never sponsored a functional neuroimaging study in players. Instead, what they did is they studied rats. I'm actually not kidding. They would get these 50 to 100 gram pellets, put little helmets on rats and smash them in the head and think they were studying traumatic brain injury that way. Uh, in front of Congress in 2009, the commissioner said, the NFL didn't know if playing football caused long-term brain damage. They were studying the issue. Maxine Waters, who was the congresswoman from Los Angeles, said to the commissioner having the NFL study traumatic brain injury in football was sort of like the tobacco companies studying lung cancer. It was a conflict of interest. I had continued to see in our practice at the Amen Clinics football players who were being, who were depressed, demented, had marital problems, substance abuse problems. When they would apply for disability, the NFL acted like many employers who would just deny, blame the employee, say it was other things, not chronic effects of traumatic brain injury. The problem with this position is if you don't admit you have a problem, you cannot do anything to solve it. Many brain damaged players were left without help or hope. And in 2007, it started for me. We began to see more and more NFL players. In 2009, I partnered with the Los Angeles chapter of the NFL Players Association, and we started, now have completed, the world's largest imaging study on active and retired players. The imaging changed everything. We published our first study last year on 100 players, where we saw compared to an age and gender matched healthy group, they had dramatically low activity in many areas of the brain, particularly their prefrontal cortex, judgment, impulse control, planning, forethought, their temporal lobes involved with memory, mood stability, temper control. And one thing that really surprised us, which was they actually had very low activity in their cerebellum. Cerebellum, you might remember, uh, from medical school is involved in coordination, but what we have learned and many other researchers have learned in the last decade is the cerebellum is also involved in thought coordination or your ability to integrate new information. And when you damage the frontal lobes, as you do when you play a contact sport like football, the frontal lobes and the cerebellum are dynamically connected and when you damage the frontal lobe, you actually turn off the function in the cerebellum. Now, my heart is actually not as a researcher. My heart is as a clinician. I like getting people better. And after the first five players in our study, their scans were so bad, I realized we needed to add a second arm to the study that involved rehabilitation. Can you, in fact, take a brain that had been concussed, subconcussed thousands of times, and reverse the damage? So what we did is we put together a